combinations. A combination is a mathematical technique that determines the number of possible arrangements in a collection of items where the order of the selection does not matter. In combinations, you can select the items in any order. Combination of items occur when the items are selected from the same group and no item is used more than once and the order of items makes no difference. Now you might ask, what is the difference between a combination and a permutation? Now the key idea is that the order. A permutation pays attention to the order that we select our objects. The same set of objects but taken in a different order will give us different permutations. But with combination, we will select our objects from a total of n objects, but the order is no longer considered. So the order of items makes no difference at all. To help us distinguish between the permutation and combinations, let us consider the following problem. Six students are running for student government, president, vice president, and treasurer. The student who gets the greatest number of votes becomes the president. The second highest vote getter becomes the vice president, and the student who gets the third largest number of votes will be the treasurer. How many different outcomes are possible? It's important to note here that we have three different offices to fill, and it is somewhat implied that no one student can take on two different offices. And also, the number of the highest votes determine the office. So therefore, we could say that order matters here since the number of the highest votes determine the office. So this problem is a permutation problem. Now let's consider another example. Six people are on the board of supervisors for your neighborhood park. A three-person committee is needed to study the possibility of expanding the park. How many different committees can be formed from the six people? Now let us identify if this particular problem is a permutation or a combination problem. Unlike the previous example, the members of the committee here will not fill in different roles. The three people who are members of the committee will serve in the same capacity. So therefore here, we can say that the order does not really matter. So therefore, this is a combination problem. To solidify our understanding on the basics of combinations and permutations, let us consider this next example. Given the letters A, B, C, and D, we can compare how many permutations and how many combinations are possible if we choose three letters at a time. Suppose we pick A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, and C, B, A. These choices would result to six different permutations, but only one combination, which is A, B, C. Notice that permutation, the order matters, while in combination, the order does not matter. So A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, and C, B, A are all the same combination letters of A, B, C. Similarly, if I pick A, B, D, A, D, B, B, A, D, B, D, A, D, A, B, and D, B, A, this would also result to six different permutations, but just one combination of the letters A, B, D. A combination of ACD letters would result to six different permutations, namely ACD, ADC, CAD, CDA, DAC, and DCA. Also, the combination BCD 
would result to six different permutations of that letters, namely BCD, DBC, CBD, CDB, DBC, and DCB. Hence, we say that given the letters A, B, C, and D, this could result into 24 different permutations if we choose three letters at a time, while it would only give us four different combinations if we choose three letters at a time. To compute the number of possible combinations of R items that are taken from N items, we have this formula for combination, we denote that by C. N taken R is equal to N factorial divided by N minus R factorial times R factorial. Take note that in combination, you can select items in any order. The ordering here or the arrangement does not matter. Consider the following example. How many three-person committees could be formed from eight people? In this problem, we are looking at selecting three people from eight people. Since these three people will not have any distinction, any particular role in the committee, this problem is a problem of combination. Therefore, we're going to use the combination formula. Since we are selecting from eight people, n is equal to eight. And we are just selecting three people from the group of eight, so therefore r is equal to three. Using the formula for combination, we have this n is equal to 8 we have 8 factorial divided by 8 minus 3 factorial 3 factorial that is equal to 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 3 factorial then we will write 8 factorial as 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial since we have 5 factorial times 3 factorial, we will just retain 5 factorial. So this would cancel out with the 5 factorial in the numerator. And we will write out 3 factorial as 3 times 2 times 1. We will multiply 8 times 7 times 6 and divide that by 3 times 2 times 1. Notice that 3 times 2 is also equal to 6, so that cancels with the 6 here. So we just have 8 times 7, which is equal to 56. Let's now consider another problem that involves using the formula for combinations and the fundamental counting principle. In December of 2011, the U.S. Senate consisted of 51 Democrats, 47 Republicans, and two Independents. How many distinct five-person committees can be formed if each committee must have three Democrats and two Republicans? Notice that the order in which members are selected does not matter, so this problem is a problem of combinations. Since each committee must have three Democrats and two Republicans, we will first have to pick three Democrats from the number of Democrats. Using the formula for combination, we will pick three Democrats from a group of 51 Democrats. So we have 51 factorial divided by 51 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. We therefore have 51 factorial divided by 48 factorial times 3 factorial. To solve this, we will write 51 factorial as 51 times 50 minus 49 times 48 factorial. Since we have 48 factorial also in the denominator, we'll just copy that we'll leave 48 factorial as 48 factorial, and we will write out 3 factorial as 3 times 2 times 1. Now we can cancel 48 factorial 
from numerator and denominator. And that leaves us to 51 times 50 times 49 divided by 3 times 2 times 1. And that is equal to 20,825. The next step is to select two Republicans out of 47 Republicans. This is still a combination problem since the order in which members are um, selected does not matter. Using the formula for combinations, we have 47 taken 2. So take 2 Republicans out of 47. We have 47 factorial divided by 47 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. 47 minus 2 is equal to 45. Therefore, we have in the denominator 45 factorial times 2 factorial and you just copy the numerator which is 47 factorial. To solve this, we will rewrite 47 factorial as 47 times 46 times 45 factorial. And then we will copy 45 factorial in the denominator and write out 2 factorial as 2 times 1. Then we cancel 45 factorial in both numerator and denominator. That leaves us to 47 times 46 over 2, which is equal to 1,081. To find the number of committees that can be formed, we will use the fundamental counting principle. Previously, we found out that when we pick three Democrats out of 51, we can do that in 20,825 ways. We have just seen that if we picked two Republicans out of 47, we can do that in 1,081 ways. So using the fundamental counting principle, we will just multiply our results. 51 taken 3 times 47 taken 2, 20,825 times 1,081 is equal to 22,511,825 ways. Thank you.